Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to handle a few different computational errors that can arise as you try to embellish and add to your data to develop reports and such. And here I have a table that is filled in with, with four records. Now, widget one has all the data filled in. It should be no problem. It's got a cost, quantity in stock, quantity on order, total sales, and the number sold. We're good. But you can see I've put in various difficulties with the others. Like, for example, widget two is missing the quantity in stock. And it has a zero for the number sold, even though it has total sales of $15. Widget three is missing the quantity on order. Okay. Maybe there is zero quantity on order. I would assume, I would have to assume there's zero quantity in order since it's not filled in. Widget four is missing its cost, but it has 60 in stock, but I can't imagine we got those for free. So what we want to do is we want to put the formulas in there to fill in how much the value is that we have in stock, what's the value that we have on order, and what is the average total sale of any one item that we've sold in the past from our number sold column. Now in doing that, I've built a query that has the basic formulas in it. And so I'm going to put this in design view, show that to you. And so here I, I want the total value in stock. So I've taken co cost times the quantity in stock. And the next one over here is I've inserted a value on order, which is cost times quantity on order. Pretty simple stuff here. And then my average cost, instead of using the average function, which I could have done average on the total sales, I've decided to take average total sales divided by the number sold, just to show the error that you can get when you have a zero number sold and how to deal then with it, that divide by zero situation. So I've got total sales divided by the number sold. And when we run this, we can see that we're just getting blanks here where there's no data in quantity in stock. We get nothing here. Um, we've got 60 in stock, but we get nothing because widget four doesn't have a cost. Over here, because we have zero numbers sold, we have a divide by zero error. Well, we sold $15 worth, but number sold zero. Okay, that that is interesting, but still we shouldn't get a present the user with a divide by zero. We should be uh, present something a little more elegant than that. So what we want to do is we want to clean up all those er errors so that all of our formulas, quantity, value in stock, have all of the data filled in, and value on order has these two blank fields filled in, and then the average cost doesn't have any errors and it has all the fields filled in. And so we're going to use a couple different techniques to do this. And so I'm going to go here to design view and go to my first field here too. And the the first ones are fairly easy to, to fix. If it's a null value, I want to display, use it in the formula, I would just want to use a zero. I'm going to assume that null means zero in this case. And the nz function, Nancy Zebra function, does this for me. It says null to zero. In other words, anytime I see a null, I'm going to present a zero to whatever function or formula is being used. So nz and open paren to uh, go around my cost and then nz open paren and close paren to go around my quantity in stock. I'm going to do the same thing on the next field and, and just use that nz because I really have the same situation on both. One is cost times on hand the other one's cost times uh, on order. So very sim similar situations there. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that first before I go on to that third field and see if I got information filled in. And yes, I did. Now, it doesn't go back and fill in the quantity in stock, but it does fill in the value in stock. It fills in our formula. We don't want a monkey really with the actual data. We want people to see that there's potential problems with the actual data and go find the error and fix it. At least that's the philosophy I generally take. Sometimes I have a user that says fill it in anyway, even if it doesn't make sense. 
I kind of question that logic, but that's the user wanting to make sure that things are that way. Now, value on order didn't get filled in here. So I'm wondering, what was our situation with quantity on order? Maybe I didn't do the function correctly. Let's go back and check that one. And so here, oh, I didn't put the second NZ on quantity on order. So I want to put NZ in here. Okay. And that ought to fix that one here. Okay, and it did. Alrighty. Now, how do we deal with all of these different situations? This one's a little bit trickier. So I'll go there and we will take a look. So here we have this. And the first thing I'm going to do is put NZ in case I have a blank value in there. And so we'll fill those in. Almost did the same mistake again. Okay, now that I've put NZ around them, I've got two another problem that crops up in the respect that this, if it's not filled in, is going to give me a zero. And if there's a zero in there, it's also going to give me a zero. So I've got two conditions to make sure that I capture. And I'm going to do that with a simple if statement here at the beginning of the field. So let me widen this out. And over here, I'm going to put the if statement in here, and that's IIF, remember. And I'm going to say if number sold, but I'm going to put N N Z open print number sold and close parenthesis uh, equals zero. Now you notice what I did there. NZ number sold means that I'm going to return a value if it's there. Okay. If there's a zero there, I'm going to return the zero. If it's a null value, I'm going to return a zero. So if either of those conditions returns a zero, I'm going to then return an actual zero in the formula. Okay. Otherwise, if either one of those situations returns a zero, I'm just going to return a zero. Otherwise, if it, it's other than zero, I'm going to go ahead and perform the formula, which was already there. And I put NZs in front of both of them to make sure that they worked. And I'm going to close paren on the if statement there. And that should get, not give me a syntax error. And let's go see if that worked. Okay, so over here, those situations worked. It got rid of my divide by zero, and it avoided the problem of a divide by zero if it had a null value as, as this widget 4 would have returned a zero for the NZ function. And so I, I overcame that potential error both here and there and returned zero in both situations. Now, there's obviously some issues with this. If we got $1,100 in sales, we obviously sold some of widget 4. Well, bad data is bad data. You need to go fix the bad data. Uh, it's not a problem with your formula, but you can put ways in your formula to make sure that data still flows through and you don't just present your users with errors. You present them with a more elegant response. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again sometime. Thank you. Bye.